Okay, we're on Windows Server 2008 Enterprise, and we've been talking about group policy, we've done user logon messages, roaming user profiles, um, some password policy settings and user logon messages and things. Today we want to look at group policy um, and what you can do with desktop settings as far as controlling what the user can and cannot do. Um, and we'll also look at applying multiple group policies and how they apply and how you can filter them. So I'm just going to, alternatively we could go to control panel and server roles and access it that way, but I'm just going to go ahead and use the uh, Microsoft Management Console and add the GPMC that way. Alright, GPMC Group Policy Management Console gives us access to a lot of our group policy settings. And this was introduced after 2003 was released and was available as an optional download. Um, it was a significant improvement over the interface in 2000, but it comes by default with Windows 2008. Um, and it allows you to, to see a lot of things that the older versions and, and the Windows 2000 products did not. Um, you can see where a GPO is applied, how it affects other GPOs. You can sort of see the inheritance hierarchy. The inheritance hierarchy starts at the top and moves from left to right. So anything applied at the forest or site level is going to supersede or govern anything that's nested inside of it. There will be a child object, such as a domain, and then in that domain, anything that would be nested inside of that, such as an organizational unit. Okay. And we'll look at some of the settings in terms of the default domain policy and um, you know some settings that we may enable or disable. One of the first things, um, you know, in order to link or unlink a, a group policy, you can right-click on it and you can choose whether the link is enabled or disabled. And a group policy will still exist, and you always have the option of applying it, but if you unlink it, then those group policy settings will not apply once you do a GP update and that policy is refreshed. Um, enforce is an option. And if I choose enforce, this is basically the no override option from the Windows 2000, um, and also when 2003 was first released and, until you installed the GPMC. Um, they changed that to the enforced option. What that does is there's another option in group policy we can utilize called block policy inheritance. Um, but if we use that option, if we've used enforce on a group policy that's above it, then it will override those settings. Um, of course, there's the edit command, which brings up the group policy that we can edit. And here's you know, here will be all of our group policy settings. Okay, I'm going to uncheck that for now, but we'll come back and explore that in a moment. Um, that enforced option, again, it, it will override a no override option. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new group policy over SuperSpice, and we'll look at the inheritance, and we'll call this, um, we'll just call this desktop policy and SuperSpy desktop policy. Okay. And now, in this case, we have a you know a, a super spy desktop policy that's enabled on super spies. Now, one of the things I could do, I could choose this option here, block inheritance. See how the little blue exclamation point appears there? If I block policy inheritance, then even though I have a, a policy defined here, uh, normally the way it goes is okay. If if we have a GPO applied here at, on a parent object and then a GPO on a child object, um, the group policy here and the group policy here will be cumulative. As long as the settings aren't conflicting, in other words, if it's not defined here and it is defined here, then these two policies will combine and give me a cumulative set of group policy. But if they conflict, the policy applied last, in this case this policy, would always supersede this policy. Now in addition, I could also block policy inheritance, and if, if I do that here, then any conflicting setting here that would normally, you know, normally this policy, since it's being applied later than this policy, um, would be dominant. Um, if I were to do this, none of the group policy settings would be applied. But if I were to do this, if I were to enforce the default domain policy, even though I'm blocking group policy here, these policy settings will still be applied. I will not be able to override them, even though I'm using block inheritance right here. So just kind of a brief description of those options, but we'll disable both of those. And let's take a look at combining group policies, the inheritance hierarchy, and, and sort of a, a, at a cumulative uh, level. So I want to go ahead and edit this policy, and we'll make a few changes. All right click, I'm going to see Edit. And we're going to go set up some desktop policies here. 
And what we want to do is get it into administrative templates. And one of the first things we want to do is set up some sort of a mandatory wallpaper. We'll use some mandatory company wallpaper here. So one of the settings that I want to en enable, um, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go ahead and click on Enable Active Desktop. This needs to be enabled for me to enforce um, my wallpaper, HTML and JPEG wallpaper. I'm going to go ahead and define that policy setting. And let me see if I can stretch this over a little bit so that you can see. Uh, i got my resolution tweaked down here so that it'll hopefully be large enough that you can actually see things when it's compressed. But you can see now that its state has been enabled. Um, we don't want to, you know, really configure this, or you want to make sure it's disabled. You, you do, do not want to disable Active Desktop if you're going to enforce wallpaper. Um, and then what I can do is for the desktop wallpaper, I'm going to go ahead and enable it. And now here's the deal. I don't want to use an absolute path. An absolute path would be like C colon wallpaper, you know, and then the wallpaper. And the reason is, is because if this wallpaper is going to be you know, mandatory across the network, it needs to be reachable via UNC, so a network share, not an absolute path, but a relative path. So not C colon, but let's go over here. So what I want to do is, is make that wallpaper available via a network share. So I'll go to Explorer, and I want to grab my wallpaper. Um, in this case, what I have here and let's go ahead and move it and we'll share out a directory here called wallpaper we'll call it company wallpaper or how about TS wallpaper or top secret let me put my wallpaper in here, and now we need to configure share and NTFS permissions properly for this to work correctly. So I'm going to go to properties, and under security, I just want to make sure that authenticated users, which are domain users, have at least read access. They need read and list folder contents access. Um, under my sharing level permissions, I'm going to go ahead and go into sharing now. I want to share. Share this folder. We'll just leave it as TS wallpaper. For permissions, let's say I don't want everybody to get the wallpaper, but it, I do want domain users. And remember, everyone by default is added to that domain users group. And they don't need to be able to delete or change or modify the wallpaper. They just need to be able to read it to apply it to their desktop. So I will say OK, and OK, and OK. And now I'm shared. Notice this little sharing icon here. And now I want to get the UNC path or network path to that. So I'll just type in my host name. And with my host name typed in, I want to go over to TS Wallpaper. And then I'll click on my address bar up here, and I can just grab this and copy it. It's a string of text. And what I want to apply is this JPEG here, mandatory ts.jpg. Alternatively, what's more compatible with Windows is to bitmap, but the GIF, uh, less colorful, but you know, a little bit, the file size will be a little bit smaller. We'll go with the JPEG, uh, you know, for the color and, and the file size isn't so large there. Because uh, with the mandatory, uh, you know, desktop wallpaper, you, re you realize that will be some traffic generated on your network to enforce this policy until it's cached on the machine. So, go ahead and close that. Let's go back here. Now, what I want to do is I want to paste the relative UNC path here, and TS And again, we just want to make sure. I want to go back and make sure that that's exactly what the name of the file is, otherwise it won't work. So, TS wallpaper, we've got our path. Oh, the mandatory ts.jpg. Good thing I checked. And this will be our mandatory wallpaper. And we can set the style, we can center it, we can stretch it, we can tile it. We'll try to stretch it in this case. And I'm going to go ahead and apply it. And apply this setting. 